Hello, everyone. This is uh, the next in our series covering sugar um, that started off with the um, video about sugar consumption over time and then the other video more recently about um, sugar and its impact on the immune system. This is a paper about type 2 diabetes and its impact on the immune system. So, um, you know, there's two kinds of diabetes. There's type 1 diabetes, uh, which is a failure of insulin production, and type 2 diabetes, which is a failure of response to insulin. M over 90% of diabetics are type 2 diabetes, um, and type 2 diabetes is caused by um, generally uh, obesity, lack of physical activity, and age. Uh, those are the three ma major driving factors of that. Here's the long-term trends from the CDC on diabetes. You can look at this graph of diabetes in the United States. They have data starting back in 1950s. In the 1950s, the yellow graph is a percentage. Um, about 1% of the U.S. population had diabetes. Over time, you see that the percentage of people with diabetes is going up. At In 2015, it was up at near 8%. The most recent data from 2020 is that just over 1 in 10, so just over 10% um, have diabetes in 2020. So if you were to plot this out to 2020, which is about uh, here, uh, the graph has gone up to about here now. Uh, so it's up above 10%. So the, this, this trend is climbing. Um, if, and this is most likely to continue. Uh, because uh, there have not been any systemic changes in availability of types of food and in physical activity in people. And people are probably becoming more sedentary, if anything, and eating more sugar and getting more obese, if anything. Obesity is rising as well. And so um, it is over 10% now and is likely to continue to climb. So diabetes is a huge problem. One of the major things that happens in diabetics, uh, there's a lot of bad things that happen in diabetes. And one of the major things that happens is that it impacts the immune system. And people with type 2 diabetes have um, uh, significantly impaired uh, immune system function. Um, I recommend that you guys go watch the video about how the immune system works because it explains a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in this video. I will link that um, uh, this, that video up here. Uh, there will be a card and also in the description. But basically, uh, this paper, which I will also link in the description, talks about what diabetes is and how diabetes causes um, a lot of immune system dysfunction. All right, so let's get down to it. Um, the first thing that it causes is impairment of cytokine production. So cytokines are all these um, signaling molecules that the immune system uses to talk to each other and also to affect a lot of the, the changes and to kill pathogens and to kill cells that have been infected by pathogens. So these cytokines are very important for um, recruiting um, immune system cells to the area to fight and also to... Um, uh, to do the uh, to um, destroy the pathogens, and with in diabetes, their immune system, uh, their cytokine production is impaired. Then leukocyte recruitment inhibition. There's these things called chemokines that make uh, the white blood cells come to the area where they need to fight. And that recruitment function is also um, impaired in diabetic mites. These chemokines are things such as CXCL1 and CXCL2 and um, other factors like that. There's uh, defects in pattern recognition. There's a lot of innate um, pattern recognition um, systems in the body, so, such as the toll light receptors. These things uh, are expressed lower in diabetic subjects and poor glycemic control um, affects uh, the, these defect, the uh, function of these toll light receptors. Then neutrophils, as mentioned in the previous videos, neutrophils do not work well in hyperglycemic states. And macrophages, which are another important immune system cell, they also do not work as well. Natural killer cells are an, a, an, another type of innate immunity cell. Um, and those things are very important for dealing with viruses as well as bacteria and some fungi. And um, they also do not work well. And then antibodies and complement are proteins that our immune system makes to deal with these pathogens. And uh, complement kind of bridges the innate from the adaptive immune system. And antibodies, of course, are the major, um, one of the major functions of the adaptive immune system. And both of those um, do not work well in diabetics. So diabetics have lots of problems with uh, um, uh, infections. I remember I had a patient who 
would have uh, skin abscesses and infections on his skin almost every other week and would have to come in and get um, abscesses on his skins drained. And this continued for several months. And I told him, hey, you know, we can keep draining these things and giving you antibiotics or you can get to the root of the problem. And he asked me what the root of the problem was. And I said, it's your diabetes. And he was like, well, you know, I, I, I take... I take the metformin, I take the glipizide, I do what my doctors tell me to do, and that's when I told them, you know, the root of the problem is the diet. Um, most type 2 diabetics, um, the root of the problem is the diet, and um, if, you can, if you can change the diet to reverse diabetes, then um, you don't necessarily, you may not need the diabetic control medications. Uh, this gentleman was actually one of the few patients that actually... Um, decided to change his diet and change his lifestyle, and he made a dramatic change in his uh, diet, and he eventually got off of um, his metformin and glipizide, and he was also on Neurontin because he had diabetic neuropathy, and he didn't need that anymore either, and he never had uh, the skin abscesses again. He came back a couple of months later, and, and, and just to thank me that, that um, his life was so much better, um, after he changed his diet and he was no longer diabetic and no longer needed to take any diabetes medications and he didn't have to deal with any of the complications of the diabetes. So, um, yeah, so diabetes, um, which is essentially a dysfunction of sugar handling. Um, if you're not diabetic but you take sugar, essentially you are temporarily in a hyperglycemic state. Um, and so these uh, immune dysfunctions apply to you as well. Um, after a sugar load, but diabetics unfortunately are dealing with this process almost constantly um, and uh, they have d depressed immune function um, almost um, at a constant, uh, on a constant basis. So it's a severe problem. The trend is uh, going definitely in the wrong direction. We need to send this trend backwards and get, you know, down to 1% or less of people with diabetes uh, in, in America and globally. And globally, this is, this is happening all over the world. As, um, uh, as places adopt more Western diets um, that are high in fat and high in sugar and processed carbohydrates, this trend is, continues. Um, so it, it is a problem that we all need to face together and reverse. All right, well, tell me what your thoughts are and um, thanks for watching.